Peace, blessings, and love to you and your families. And may Yahweh bless the sins he has always. So in this video, we're going to talk about relying on Yahweh, our God, and not relying on our sword. So as we know, words are considered to be a weapon of defense. And this is why Yahweh says no weapon forged against you will prevail, and you will refute every tongue that accuses you, because this is the heritage of the servants of Yahweh. So there is a difference between the words of the wicked and the words of the righteous. And we're going to find that out in this video. So let's start off in Jeremiah chapter 48 verse 10. A curse on anyone who is lax in doing Yahweh's work. A curse on anyone who keeps their sword from bloodshed. Which this is a precept to Psalms 94 starting off at verse 16. Who will rise up for me against the wicked? Who will take a stand for me against evildoers? And here is the key point. Unless Yahweh had given me help, I would soon have dwelt in the silence of death. The silence of death is religions, the waterless pits, you sacrificing to the gods of death. So this is the reason why Yahweh is the one who puts his spirit on his servants. He puts his words in our mouth to do his will okay Psalms chapter 2 verse 7 I will proclaim Yahweh's decree he said to me you are my son today I have become your father ask me and I will make the nations your inheritance the ends of the earth your possession you will break them with a rod of iron you will dash them to pieces like pottery what is that rod of iron? That is talking about the face of Yahweh. His word. Okay, remember, Yahweh, our God, is the one that goes before us. So let's go ahead and show you this in Psalms chapter 27, verse 14, where it says, Wait for Yahweh. Be strong and take heart and wait for Yahweh. So the whole key point is that we must wait for the Most High Yahweh. He answers us by putting His Spirit on us, by putting His words in our hearts, in our mind, so that we may do His will. This is how Yahweh answers His people. But when you try to take it upon yourself, then you are relying on your sword. And this is the reason why the Most High Yahweh says that our people have forsaken Him, because they have become more unruly than the nations around them. And we're going to read this here from the Forgotten Books of Eden. This is chapter 22, starting off at verse 1. On the tenth heaven, Aravah, I saw the appearance of Yahweh's face, like iron made to glow in fire, and brought out emitting sparks, and it burns. Thus I saw Yahweh's face, but Yahweh's face is ineffable, marvelous, and very awful, and very, very terrible. And who am I to tell of Yahweh's unspeakable being, and of his very wonderful face? And I cannot tell the quantity of his many instructions and various voices. Yahweh's throne, very great, and not made with hands. So, just wanted to go ahead and show you that part here, where it says how Yahweh's face is like iron made to glow in fire. Now, it's a precept to so Ezekiel chapter 1, starting off at verse 25. Then there came a voice from above the vault over their heads as they stood with lowered wings. Right, which again is talking about the cherubims, the seraphims. This is the reason why it says this here quickly in Isaiah 13 and 13. Therefore I will make the heavens tremble, and the earth will shake from its place at the wrath of Yahweh Almighty, and the day of his burning anger. So we're going to continue to read in Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 26. Above the vault 
over their heads was what looked like a throne of lapis lazuli and high above on the throne was a figure like that of a man. I saw that from what appeared to be his waist up he looked like glowing metal as if full of fire and that from there down he looked like fire and brilliant light surrounded him. As we read about the appearance of Yahweh's face okay again one more time so that this part here can marinate in your face so who am I to tell of Yahweh's unspeakable being and of his very wonderful face and I cannot tell the quantity of his many instructions and various voices Yahweh's throne very great and not made with hands his many instructions and various voices this is all talking about Yahweh's words all right which is that iron scepter which we will rule the nations with in Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 15 you saw no form of any kind the day Yahweh spoke to you at Horeb out of the fire therefore watch yourselves very carefully so that you do not become corrupt and make for yourselves an idol an image of any shape whether formed like a man or a woman so this is what's going on today all right they have exchanged their glorious God for the image of a book and now we're gonna read here now from the book of Enoch this is our uh, chapter 52 starting off at verse 1 and after those days in that place where I had seen all the visions of that which is hidden for I had been carried off in a whirlwind and they had borne me towards the west there mine eyes saw all the secret things of heaven that shall be a mountain of iron and a mountain of copper and a mountain of silver and a mountain of gold and a mountain of soft metal and a mountain of lead and I asked the angel who went with me saying what things are these which I have seen in secret and he said unto me all these things which thou hast seen shall serve the dominion of his anointed that he may be potent and mighty on the earth and that angel of peace answered saying unto me wait a little and there shall be revealed unto thee all the secret things which surround Yahweh and these mountains which thine eyes have seen the mountain of iron and the mountain of copper and the mountain of silver and the mountain of gold and the mountain of soft metal and the mountain of lead all these shall be in the presence of the elect one as wax before the fire and like the water which streams down from above upon those mountains and they shall become powerless before his feet and it shall come to pass in those days that none shall be saved either by gold or by silver and none be able to escape and there shall be no iron for war nor shall one close oneself with a breastplate bronze shall be of no service and tin shall be of no service and shall not be esteemed and lead shall not be desired and all these things shall be denied and destroyed from the surface of the earth when the elect one shall appear before the face of Yahweh right again most high Yahweh said that his word was going to come to pass because this is a precept to Micah chapter 4 verse 1 and the last days you see that people are telling you that Jebus is coming, you know, that Shiva Buddha Allah is coming to pick you up and bring you somewhere else. That's cool. That's all right. You can believe that story if you want. But here's the truth. In the last days, the mountain of Yahweh's temple will be established as the highest of the mountains. It will be exalted above the hills and peoples will stream to it. Many nations will come and say, come. 
let us go up to the mountain of Yahweh, to the temple of the Most High of Jacob. He will teach us his ways so that we may walk in his path. The law will go out from to Zion, the word of Yahweh from Yerushalayim. He will judge between many peoples and will settle disputes for strong nations far and wide. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war any more. And also this goes hand in hand with the scripture here. Isaiah 24 and 23. The moon will be dismayed, the sun ashamed. For Yahweh Almighty will reign on Mount Tzion and in Yerushalayim, and before its elders with great glory. Who are our elders? Our elders are the prophets who were anointed with the Spirit of the Most High, right? This is the reason why we read them every day, because the Most High Yahweh said, that whosoever does for him they will be remembered okay so this is the reason why everybody reads out the prophets out the, you know the laws they, they, they know about Moses because those are our elders you understand that it's not talking about some man that is you know a self-proclaimed elder because he thinks that he knows the Bible for 20 or 30 years all right and, you know it's not indirectly towards anybody but it's for anybody who feels that way Anybody who feels because they have read the Bible for 50, 70 years or whatever years that they are considered to be an elder. You're not an elder. You're still learning. All right. You are a child of the Most High. Remember that. Because you know why? It goes hand in hand with the scripture here. These are the days that we are living in. All right. Whether many people are in denial or not, that's fine. That's something that you have to get over. But it does not stop the truth. The truth will continue with or without you. So Zechariah 13 and 5 says, Each will say, I am not a prophet. I am a farmer. The land has been my livelihood since my youth. You see that? This is how the people are. right? So-called elders. People that think that you know it all. Because why? Because you've been reading the Bible for all these years you understand that it's not it's not for you to be offended I'm just saying that so that you can understand the mindset of most people out there people who do not accept correction that's the difference here you sincere brothers and sisters of all ages you know you have accepted correction all right again there's a difference between the righteous and the wicked let's go ahead and continue Hosea 2 and 16 and that day declares Yahweh, you will call me my husband you will no longer call me my master. I will remove the names of the bells from her lips. No longer will their names be invoked. And furthermore, it says, And that day I will make a covenant for dumb with the beast of the field, the birds in the sky, and the creatures that move along the ground. Bow and sword and battle I will abolish from the land, so that all may lie down in safety. All right, which again, you know, the beasts of the field, the birds in the sky, and the creatures that move along the ground, it's talking about the other nations. All right, whether you understand that or not, it's talking about the other nations because it all goes back to Genesis, all right, where the Most High Yahweh gave dominion to Adam, right? Adam represented humans. In case, you know, your pastor or your elder haven't told you that, in case you haven't found out for yourself, Adam represents a people, all right? It's metaphorically talking about one man, but it's talking about humans who are basically given the breath of life, rather say. So this is the reason why the Most High Yahweh says that he's going to make a covenant with those who know better. You know, those who are willing, those who are not going to be racist. Those who are not going to be, you know, holding grudges against one another. Again, bow and sword in battle I will abolish from the land, so that all may lie down in safety. So people are going to come out of those religions. They're going to come out of those cults and those secret societies, right? They're going to come out of those uh, racist organizations that they're in, and they're going to come worship Yahweh. This is why Yahweh says it's going to happen. And who are we? 
who are we to say that the Most High Yahweh cannot do such things, right? Zephaniah 2 and 11 says, Yahweh will be awesome to them when he destroys all the gods of the earth. Distant nations will bow down to him. You see that? Just like we read. Who are the distant nations? I'm talking about the people who have not heard of the Most High Yahweh's glory. <laughs> but guess what? His glory is being revealed in these times and in these days. So distant nations will bow down to him and all of them in their own lands. In Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 10 says, So do not be afraid, Jacob my servant. Do not be dismayed, Yasharel, declares Yahweh. I will surely save you out of a distant place. Your descendants from the land of their exile. Jacob will again have peace and security and no one will make him afraid. I am with you and I will save you, declares Yahweh. Though, see that? This is the key point here. Because, you know, people think there's going to be all peaches and cream. You know, they think that, you know, there's going to be a nice little lifestyle while all these things is happening. No, remember, remember this always, people, brothers and sisters. The Most High Yahweh says that judgment and restoration shall be happening simultaneously. That means at the same time. Why do you think the Most High Yahweh says? A thousand may fall on your left side, ten thousand to your right side, but it will not come near you. You understand that? Why do you think Yahweh says that we are His witness? Because we are going to be here in these days to witness all this go down and still be here to praise the Most High Yahweh. You see that? Whether you believe it or not, that's, you know, that's all on you. But it's going to happen, and it's true. Again, though I completely destroy all the nations among which I scatter you, I will not completely destroy you. I will discipline you, but only in due measure. I will not let you go entirely unpunished. Which is a precept to Numbers chapter 24, verse 4. The prophecy of one who hears the word of the Most High. Who sees a vision from the Almighty, who falls prostrate, and whose eyes are opened. How beautiful are your tents, Jacob, your dwelling places, Yashura. Like valleys they spread out, like gardens beside a river, like aloes planted by Yahweh, like cedars beside the waters. The Most High Yahweh says that He will plant them to be a people for His renown, okay? They will be called, you know, uh, 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 oaks of righteousness. That says water will flow from their bucket. Their seed will have abundant water. 